Okay, everyone. Uh, hello. <clears throat> I am uh, Charles Brendan Hackney. I teach visual arts um, at Eastridge High School in Pike County. Um, this is my second KVEC grant. Um, my first one was over 3D printing, hence why I kept the title. Um, so with this one, I wanted to go a step further with the 3D printing process, and I found out that there were actually 3D pins. Um, so the purpose of this, uh, this KVEC grant was to get those pins and to kind of introduce my students uh, at a baser level to the 3D printing process. Um, so my proposal was showing the students the connection between art and technology, because uh, there seems to be a disconnect in their minds of what art and what it could use. Uh, they needed a broader sense um, of what art and technology can do together. Um, so like I said in my previous grant, but most art students consider art to be old pictures and paintings, and uh, it never dawns on them that all the technology we use is somehow connected to art, whether it be from classic designs, aesthetics, the devices we use every single day, the cars, whatever. Um, with my last grant, I was actually able to show the students that connection. And it was a big highlight for, uh, for my class, and everybody was really curious about it and asked me about it almost on a weekly basis. Um, it, really, it really blew their minds that the 3D printer, and I had one in the art room, um, they were kind of like, wow, this is not in the computer classes and stuff. And I kind of had to explain to them you know, how we could use this, you know, to create art and stuff. Uh, so it did achieve my goal of showing the students that there were viable and exciting careers uh, with art and jobs that are also connected with technology. So this year's grant, I was going to go a step further with that newer technology. Um, this techn technology also had the direct connection to the 3D printer. Um, and instead of using a machine with a pre-designed layout, we could make a free form 3D object and make a build from that and transfer it over, have the 3D printer print it out. Um, and get to that at a later time. This to me had a strong connection to STEAM um, and a lot of students don't get that in a basic art class, I didn't feel. Um, so the items purchased, um, of course, the 3D Doodler pins, which you can see on the screen here. Um, they're very nice, very fancy. They cost about $70 a piece. Uh, I would not be able to afford them without the grant. Um, also the pin filament, which is basically uh, um, plastic, uh, it's the same used in a 3D printing machine. Um, a lot of people say it reminds them of weed eating string to get you a, a little visual of what it's like. Um, and we also got some paint with the grant, which they could use at, on their products <clears throat> or on their projects after they got finished. So the process, it's much like 3D printers. Um, they have the same parts and processes. The, the pen has an internal heater and extruder that is fed from the top, plastic filament and the same type uh, that is used in most 3D printers. Uh, it, it works a lot like a hot glue gun is continuously feed filament from the top. Um, the difference that it has a fast and slow button, so you have better control than traditional hot glue guns. Um, and the only con that I found, me and my students faced with the pins when they must be always plugged in. You have to have them plugged in. They don't have a battery um, or any internal uh, method to power them. So you can't really go all over the room with them. You have to stay in one spot, which can be a good or bad thing. Um, here's some data that I collected. I gave them a little survey um, on SurveyMonkey before trying to make the connection between art and technology. Um, most of them had no connection um, with art and technology. Some of them had a little and, and a few of them who were very good digital artists, they had a, a good strong connection. So we did this unit, we did the project, and I gave them a similar survey afterwards asking a little bit more in depth. And most of them had a better understanding and made more connections between those two. Um, so the journey, um, we spent a week on this, a week, well, actually about two weeks. Uh, but we went over a unit on 3D printing again and had the students, had the students watch tutorials on YouTube and various sites. They really enjoy um the videos and from doing the modern classroom project through KVIC beforehand this summer um it really helped me speed up the process of getting the three materials out getting them started while they were watching these tutorials um and them gaining the understanding on their own um without me having to go over and lecture and lecture and lecture uh, so that was a highlight i would highly recommend the modern classroom project 
um, which KVIC also does. Um, so after that, they practice simple objects um, using the 3D pens, um, take softballs or footballs or flags or something like that. Um, the, the next step up, I found and printed out templates for the students, um, and they started creating actual 3D objects, building them up with the filament, not just flat 2D uh, surface kind of project. Um, then I had them go further than that, uh, and they had to do like a 3D build, including more than one side, not just building base to top, um, which is very interesting to see. Here is the first step um, in that process, if you will. Um, they worked with the pins. This is first day kind of stuff, surprised me. Uh, the label they could achieve with them. They had no experience with them before. Um, some had experience and, and had their own 3D pins, but these were a lot better, they said, more advanced, um, and they could do a lot more with them. So here's kind of second day, the step two, students used a template. They were tracing out um, these objects that, that they chose and had an interest in. Um, they were doing more complex objects, and they also freehanded a lot during this point. You know, they would make their names or uh, butterflies or something like that, which was really cool. Uh, and the step three, um, here is where I had them actually going and building objects in a 3D space. You can see one girl with the mushroom and the dog um, that actually has the four legs in space and the bird cage or the bird and sitting on the uh, <clears throat> kind of stoop kind of thing. Um, those were all built in 3D. Very cool. Um, all the students enjoyed, enjoyed this. They didn't really think that they could get to this step. Uh, they didn't think they could do this complex stuff, you know, uh, while using art and technology. Um, so here is a student he is going to talk about. Um, uh, using so this 3D is pens. Student, Gabe Farron. He is just now beginning his journey with 3D pens. Gabe, so what have you found out so far about using 3D pens? Uh, 3D pens at the beginning of just learning them can be a little difficult, but <clears throat> once you get used to it, you can make quite a bit. I mean, you could build structures, you could build a uh, template, use templates to make uh, smaller gadgets if you need. Um, you can use them to repair things, possibly. So what's your overall thought on 3D pens so far? 3D pens, they could be... Uh, you like them? You don't like them? Yeah, I like them. I mean, it's just going to take a little time to get used to. Um, so um, he was kind of nervous. That was kind of an impromptu little uh, interview I gave him, but I thought he did a good job. Um, so here's what I want to do later on. We didn't really get to it. Uh, I plan on doing it before the, the end of the school year, um, but I kind of haven't uh, gone through the whole process. Uh, so it's my goal at the beginning to get the students comfortable with the pins, which I did, and then able to take that work over to the actual 3D printer um, from the stuff that KV helped me with before. Um, so like I said, we haven't got this step, but I plan on doing it. It is to start the 3D process. They would create an object, you say, take it over to um, an HP Sprout computer I have. If you haven't seen them, it has a 3D scanner uh, coming out from the monitor of the computer. And then you have a little platform that you can drop objects onto and it spins it around, scans it into your computer um, making the actual 3D file, which is read by 3D printers, and you can take that file, um, smooth it out, render it a little bit uh, better um, before you print it, and then print it out, and they could take that 3D print and, and actually paint it or continue on, add on to it with the 3D pins, which would be really cool. Uh, so hopefully I'll get that get to that later on. Uh, my conclusions, the students really had fun with this unit, um, the project probably more than any project that we've done so far this year they absolutely loved it um i know it was cliche but their their smiling faces made it all worth it the missteps and mistakes um that got caught up in the process but i think more than anything you got more students to open their eyes about how technology and art can be uh interrelated and it even solidified to some of them that they have a if they have a passion for art that they can turn this into a career um i felt like before uh, talking to them, they would, you know, they were going to go to college to do something else and have a minor in art. And and now I think that kind of made them think a little bit that maybe if they wanted to do an art career that they could um, and actually make money doing it, which is a big difference <laughs> in people having an art degree and actually using it. Um, 
but I state this every time I receive one of these grants. They help so much. KVIC helps so much. Uh, the learning innovation grant without it, I wouldn't be able to, to do half the stuff I do in my, my class. And for the bottom of my heart, thank you all uh, that you helped to accomplish in this area. So that's it. Thank you.